three years ago, three or four years ago, I was approached by someone from the New York Shakespeare Festival. That's Joseph Pepp's organization in New York. And they had acquired the rights to produce a stage play, or musical as it turned out, of uh, a screenplay that Joe Orton had written to be the Beatles' third movie. Uh, at the time, it was never produced because Joe Orton died and Brian Epstein died, and the Beatles eventually broke up. So this thing had been floating around, and then Joe Orton became sort of popular, had a revival on Broadway, and they acquired the property. We talked about it a little bit, and I decided to do it. I decided also not to do it as, uh, as imitation Beatles, but to do it as I would do it. And uh, since 20 years had elapsed, it didn't really make much sense anyway to do it as uh, imitation Beatles. And if the workshops turn out well, then it'll probably go to Broadway and then the world. So I'm a Broadway kind of guy. Since the last solo album that I had released, which was a cappella, and the uh, and the time that I started seriously uh, working on this album, I, uh, I did a number of productions. And uh, each of them kind of reflect a prog progression towards the, uh, the motif that's reflected in Nearly Human. Uh, the first album that I did was uh, XTC's Skylarking album. And that was a fairly meticulous well overdubbed album, uh, principally because that was the concept. Uh, we were um, working on, on what I considered almost a musical sculpture. It involved a, a lot of careful chipping away and a lot of careful uh, uh, filigree and ornamentation in order to come out with, uh, with what was, to me, a pre-visualized final product. The next album I did was uh, Bourgeois Tag's Yo-Yo album. And in that one, I tried to encourage the band to, uh, to all play together and perform as much uh, in the live feel as possible, uh, because I had seen them live, and I thought that they, uh, that they functioned best that way. That uh, eventually led to the Pursuit of Happiness um, Love Junk album, in which probably 80% of the album, everything except the lead vocals and the guitar, solos and the background vocals were is the way the band sounds live we uh, avoided scrupulously doing any overdubs at all that weren't absolutely necessary so uh, so even in my production work I've been sort of evolving towards this live thing trying to get people to become more aware of the performance aspect and less aware of of the uh, transcription aspect you know the uh, search for the for the elusive perfect take to me, there, is, uh, there are a million masterpieces out there. The, the song could be performed any number of ways and still be satisfying, uh, but in a different way each time. Most all of the acts that I've worked with, uh, Gr Grand Funk Railroad, uh, Meatloaf, uh, Patti Smith, uh, going back uh, to the early Utopia albums, uh, all of these have embodied a certain, an attempt at least, to capture what we uh, view as the live essence uh, of, the, uh, of the musical act. This uh, concept, the so-called concept, which to me is not a concept, uh, the idea that music is, is language and that it is uh, more significant when there is an actual interaction between people, that that's always been uh, an important factor in, in most of the records that I've made, whether I'm performing them myself or whether they're being produced. 